everyone. Today I'm going to be reading one of my favourite Mesopotamian myths to you. It's called The Descent of Ishtar to the Netherworld, uh, and it's originally in Akkadian, but it's uh, known in a much earlier form in Sumerian. It's just uh, they use a different goddess. Well, the same goddess, but a different name. Um, this is something new for us. I'm not going to give a lot of commentary. Um, I'm just going to read through the myth and then highlight some interesting bits at the end. If you like it, let me know. I'll do some more next week. Um, if you really don't like it, also let me know and maybe I won't do any more. Um, it is in your hands, people. So, uh, oh, before we get going, a lot of Mesopotamian mythology is incomplete just due to the nature of the texts and the nature of preservation. So if there are breaks in the text, I'm just going to pause to indicate the break and then move straight on. To the netherworld, land of no return, Ishtar, daughter of Sin, set her mind. Indeed, the daughter of Sin did set her mind to the gloomy house, the seat of the netherworld, to the house that none leaves who enters, to the road whose journey has no return, to the house whose entrance are bereft of light, where dust is their sustenance and clay their food. They see no light, but dwell in darkness. They are clothed like birds in wings for garments, and dust has gathered on the door and bolt. When Ishtar reached the gate of the netherworld, she said words to the gatekeeper. Gatekeeper, open your gate for me. Open your gate for me that I may enter. I will break down the door. I will smash the bolt. I will break down the frame. I will topple the doors. I will raise up the dead to devour the living. The dead shall outnumber the living. The gatekeeper made ready to speak, saying to the great one, Ishtar, Stay, my lady, do not cast it down. Let me go announce your name to the queen, Ereshkigal. The gatekeeper went in and said to Ereshkigal, Here is your sister Ishtar at your gate, she who holds the great play rope, who roils up the deep before Ea. When Ereshkigal heard this, her face went pale as a cut-down tamarisk. Her lips went dark as the lip of a vat. What made her resolve on me? What had aroused bad feeling in her against me? Here now, shall I drink water with the Anunagods? Shall I eat clay for bread? Shall I drink dirty water for beer? Shall I weep for the young men who have left their helpmeets? Shall I then weep for the young women who are wrenched from their lover's loins? Shall I weep for the helpless infant who was taken before its time? Go, gatekeeper, open your gate to her. Treat her according to the age-old rules. Off went the gatekeeper and opened the gate for her. Enter, my lady, that Kutha rejoice over you, that the palace of the netherworld be glad at your presence. He brought her in the first gate. He loosed and removed the great tiara off her head. Why, gatekeeper, did you remove the great tiara off my head? Enter, my lady, thus the rules of the mistress of the netherworld. He brought her in the second gate. He loosed and removed the earrings from her ears. Why, gatekeeper, did you remove the earrings of my ears? Enter, my lady, thus the rules of the mistress of the netherworld. He brought her in the third gate. He loosed and removed the beads of her neck. Why, gatekeeper, did you remove the be beads of my neck? Enter, my lady, thus the rules of the mistress of the netherworld. He brought her in the fourth gate. He loosed and removed the garment pins of her breast. Why, gatekeeper, did you remove the garment pins of my breast? Enter, my lady. Thus the rules of the mistress of the netherworld. He brought her in the fifth gate. He loosed and removed the girdle of birthstones of her waist. Why, gatekeeper, did you remove the girdle of birthstones from my waist? Enter, my lady. Thus the rules of the mistress of the netherworld. He brought her in the sixth gate. He loosed and removed her bracelets and anklets. Why, gatekeeper, did you remove my bracelets and anklets? Enter, my lady. Thus the rules of the mistress of the netherworld. He brought her in the seventh gate. He loosed and removed the loincloth of her body. Why, gatekeeper, did you remove the loincloth of my body? Enter, my lady. Thus the rules of the mistress of the netherworld. As soon as Ishtar had entered the netherworld, Ereshkigal saw her and trembled with fury at her. Ishtar, without thinking, sat down above her. Ereshkigal made ready to speak, and said to Namtar, her vizier, these words, 
Go, Namtar, take her from my presence. Let loose against her sixty diseases. Eye diseases against her eyes, side disease against her sides, foot disease against her feet, heart disease against her heart, head disease against her head. I let them loose against all of her. After the Lady Ishtar went down to the netherworld, the bull would not mount the cow, the ass would not impregnate the jenny, the young man would not impregnate the girl in the thoroughfare, the young man slept in... the girl slept by herself. Papsukal, vizier of the great gods, was downcast, and his features were gloomy. He was dressed in mourning and left his hair unkempt. Off he went in despair before Sin, his father, weeping. Before Ea the king, his tears flowed down. Ishtar has gone down to the netherworld. She has not come up. As soon as Ishtar went down to the netherworld, the bull will not mount the cow, the ass will not impregnate the jenny, the young man will not impregnate the girl in the thoroughfare. The young man has slept in his... The girl has slept by herself. Ea, in his wise heart, conceived what was called for. He created a Sushunamir, an impersonator. Go, a Sushunamir, make your way to the netherworld. Let the seven gates of the netherworld be opened before you. Let Ereshkigal see you and feel well disposed toward you. When she calms down and her feelings are well disposed, have her swear the oath of the great gods. Look up and set your mind on the water skin. O oh, my lady, let them give me the water skin that I may drink water from it. When Ereshkigal heard this, she smote her thigh, she bit her finger. You asked of me the unaskable. Come, Asushunamir, I will curse you a great curse. Let me ordain you a fate never to be forgotten. May the bread of the public ploughing be your food. May the public sewer pipe be your drinking place. The shadow of a wall be your station. The threshold be your dwelling. May drunk and sober slap your cheek. Ereshkigal made ready to speak, saying these words to Namtar, her vizier. Go, Namtar, knock at the Egalina. Decorate the thresholds with cowrie shells. Bring out and seat the Anunagods on the thrones of gold. Sprinkle Ishtar with water of life and take her from my presence. Namtar went and knocked at the Egalina. He decorated the thresholds with cowrie shells. He brought out and seated the Anunagods on thrones of gold. He sprinkled Ishtar with water of life and brought her away. He brought her out the first gate, and returned to her the loincloth of her body. He brought her out the second gate, and returned to her bracelets and anklets. He brought her out the third gate, and returned to her the girdle of birthstones of her waist. He brought her out the fourth gate, and returned to her the garment pins of her breast. He brought her out the fifth gate, and returned to her the beads of her neck. He brought her out the sixth gate, and returned to her the earrings of her ears. He brought her at the seventh gate, and returned to her the great tiara of her head. If she does not pay you her ransom, bring her back here. Tammuz, her childhood lover, bathe in a bath of pure water and anoint with fine oil. Dress him in a red garment, let him strike up a lapis flute. Let prostitutes turn his mood. The Lady Balili was putting right her jewellery. Eye stones with which she filled her... When she heard the wailing for her brother, Belili smote the jewellery of her body, the eye stones that filled the wild cow's face. Do not rob me of my only brother. On the day Tammuz says hurrah. The lapis flute and the carnelian ring say hurrah. The lady Belili was putting right her jewellery, eye stones with which she filled her. When she heard the wailing for her brother, Belili smote the jewellery of her body, the eye stones that filled the wild cow's face. Do not rob me of my only brother. On the day Tammuz says hurrah, the lapis flute and carnelian ring say hurrah. With him say hurrah. The wailing men and wailing women, let the dead come up and smell the incense. So, that was the descent of Ishtar to the netherworld. This hymn is really useful uh, because it shows us a, a quite clear image of how the Akkadians viewed the underworld. There's no Elysian fields like there is in Greek mythology. There's no concept of heaven or a paradise beyond. It's a dark and gloomy place ruled over by its own set of gods. And the inhabitants are kind of at the, the mercy and the whims of the living relatives they leave behind. 
something you see in other sources is this idea that uh, once you die, you rely on your family to give you offerings, libations of wine and beer, food offerings uh, left at a shrine or a gravesite, um, or maybe a, like a household shrine, that were intended to nourish you after you had died. Uh, if you're unlucky enough to have no relatives, no children, you're left to really eat and drink dust, which is, is quite a bleak outlook on the afterlife. There's a a little bit of a missing section in the middle you might have noticed we jump suddenly from Aya talking to uh, his servant and then Arash Kigal responds what happened here I suspect is uh, a scribe was copying out the myth from another tablet and because what happens is uh, someone will say something as, as you've noticed probably within this composition uh, someone will say something give instructions and then those instructions are repeated uh, identically as uh, the actions carried out by another person. Uh, so what what we suspect has happened here is that Air gave these gave these instructions, and the scribe copying out the text looked down and and saw the repetition, which would have been the the servant carrying out these instructions, and just skipped down to the next section. And there's also a bit in here that isn't terribly clear. Uh, what happens? after Ishtar confronts Ereshkigal, her sister, and accidentally takes the seat above Ereshkigal. And given Ereshkigal is the queen of the underworld, this would have been quite insulting. Ishtar is basically killed, so the gods have to mobilize to uh, revive her and bring her back out of the underworld. But Ereshkigal demands a substitute for Ishtar, and what happens is that Tammuz or Demuzi, Ishtar's husband in many uh, sources, is taken in her place. Um, and we'll see that, I think, next week I'll read Demuzi's Dream, which is kind of a sequel to The Descent of Ishtar and explains what happens to Demuzi, to Tammuz, um, after Ishtar comes back and he's uh, hunted by the demons of the netherworld. Uh, so I think that's it for today. Um, like I said, let me know what you think. I'd be very interested to hear your opinions. And I hope you have a great weekend.